Hi, I'm Matt. Welcome to my shop. I'm going to be showing April a little bit about sharpening today. What do you know about sharpening? I don't know much. Okay. I know there's different methods. Have, have you ever sharpened anything before? No. No? Maybe a lathe tool. Lathe tool? Okay. Recently. Mm -hmm. So no chisels, no, no plain irons or anything like that? No. Okay, so it's a lot of different ways to sharpen things, but really it's a really personal preference of which method you choose and you know costs and what you enjoy. So you can do something which is like sandpaper and a flat surface. That's like the easiest way to get into sharpening. It's the cheapest to get started, but it does add up over time, but you don't need a whole lot to get started. Mm -hmm. um, another really common way is to use water stones, which is what I'm going to show you today. Um, there's also diamond stones, or you can use a uh, round wet, wet grinder wheel like the one over there. So let's talk about uh, stones, I guess. So stones come in different grades or different grits, kind of like sandpaper does. This is a water stone down here. This has a 800 grit on one side, mm -hmm. and this is 4,000 grit on the other one. And this one here is an 8,000 grit. And this is actually a ceramic stone. And this is some other kind of like water stone. This is more expensive. Um, it just lasts longer. You don't mm -hmm. have to uh, flatten it as often. Uh, these are a lot cheaper. They just wear a lot faster. And to flatten them is really easy. I have a mm -hmm. diamond plate here, which works really well for flattening. It's a really coarse diamond plate. And before you get started or before you put the stone away after you use it, you just kind of flatten it. And depending on how much flat or how much sharpening you do, mm -hmm. you can flatten it as you go. Really simple. Just take the stone, rub it on the diamond plate. <laughs> so, one thing you notice about sharpening stones is, is you're basically just rubbing stuff around all the time. Mm -hmm. So you're rubbing the stone on a plate, you're rubbing the, rubbing the chisel on the stone, you know, whatever. So what I do is, on my stones it's pretty easy to tell when they're clean up and flat. Mm -hmm. um, this side is not that obvious, but on this side, like, you can see how like you got the, the wear spots and the dirt there. Mm -hmm. So I'll flatten that side. Let me get the junk off the stone here. So I have a bucket of water on standby. Usually I just use a sprayer, but this one okay. I think doesn't work. Yep. So we're Maybe gonna you have use. A safety on. There's a safety on sprayers. I'm joking with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm about to learn something today. <laughs> So I can rub this one on here a little bit. Let's take a look at it. As you can see how it's starting to actually cut out here. Oh, yeah. But you can see the areas that are actually dished out. They're the ones that are still dirty and look like they have some like blackness to them. Yes. So I can keep going. And the flatter you get your stones, the flatter the edges you're going to be able to put on, this, on the chisel or plain iron or whatever you're trying to sharpen. If you try and sharpen with a dish, all you're going to do is put like a curve in the blade. Unless if you're going for that, then, you know. Mm -hmm. Now you know how to put a curved edge on a blade. <laughs> That's probably good enough for this. Okay. So we've got a nice clean area through here. It's got a little bit of a dish there still, but we should be good to go. Now, depending on how bad a shape your thing is in, it's going to kind of dictate where you start. I guess I have to put this down there. So this one is pretty good. Like most of my chisels, I try to keep them sharp all the time so they're ready to go mm -hmm. and I'll show you my secret to that at the end. Okay. <laughs> so this one really doesn't need a whole lot of work but if it's really like beat up or you have um, any kind of pitting or the edge is broken at all mm -hmm. you're gonna start at something a little coarser so even 800 grit might not be enough mm -hmm. you can start there it's gonna be there for a long time it's working on it. So what does coarser mean? Um, like what grit? Like 200 grit oh, okay. if it's really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, 800 grit does pretty well for Pretty much everything is getting started, mm -hmm. um, but you can drop down further if you want to speed it along a little bit. So if you use sandpaper, would you also go for the same grits as the stones? Yeah, you can go okay. with them like that, yeah. So with the the sandpaper stuff, usually you start at like uh, 220 or something like that, mm -hmm. depending, on, again, depending on how coarse it is or the, how uh, bad your edge is. Mm -hmm. Then you can go up to like a thousand, a couple thousand grit, like automotive sandpaper mm -hmm. as well. But that's where kind of where it gets expensive because those things aren't yeah, cheap, cheap for a sheet. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much go through a sheet every single chisel you sharpen. I gotcha. Because it wears pretty quickly. But if that's the only option other than buying a stone, yeah, if you're it's a good method. And if you're not sharpening that often too, it's not that bad of, yeah. of a thing either. You use hand tools all the time, so it's pretty important that you have the tools to do it, whereas I don't really use them that often, so I could probably get away with sandpaper. For now, we'll see. For now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first thing you want to do, and again, this is going to vary depending on where your chisel is in its life or in its condition, mm -hmm. but the first thing you want to do is flatten the back, or at least flatten the front edge here where the actual edge is going to be. The first like little bit there needs to be pretty flat. This one's pretty good. Uh, you can you can get as crazy as you want with it. You can like polish the whole back if you really want to. Mm -hmm. Not really that all that necessary. But to do that, it's really simple. All you do is put the 
chisel down on the stone, kind of press it down and just rub it back and forth. And you can do a few things here to kind of distribute the wear on the stone because you're gonna wear you're gonna wear the stone out. So you can do a couple of again depends on what you like to do, but you can kind of go back and forth this way and come across. Or what I usually do is just kind of come through like this, and I'll come over a little bit, come through like this, a little more, come through, and kind of do that. I gotcha. But again, since this chisel is pretty much good to go, it doesn't really need much of that. All I'm doing right now is just kind of cleaning it up, mm -hmm. removing any, any kind of folded material that's coming over the bevel here, mm -hmm. just to clean it up. So that's probably good to go. So now to actually sharpen the bevel on here, you can get pretty crazy with this if you want. So if you want, you can do this freehand. If you're able to hold the chisel at the correct angle and rub it along the stone, which isn't actually that hard to do. It sounds hard. But you can kind of do something like that. And for the most part, if you do it enough, you get pretty good at it. And it's not really all that difficult to maintain the chisel at the same angle throughout the entire travel. So what I'm doing here is you can see my arms, my upper body is pretty much locked together. Yeah. And this is all in the hips. Just swaying my legs back and forth. My hips are moving, but my upper body, I'm trying to keep that pretty much stable. I'm not moving it at all. Mm -hmm. and, and the figure eight position? Or? Figure eight position kind of makes the wear on the stone a little bit easier. Okay. Um, and this one's actually, oh, I haven't done that for a long time, and that's pretty sharp. <laughs> there you go. Want to cut some? So if you're not into the whole freehand thing, there are a few jigs you can get to actually hold the chisel at whatever, whatever angle you want it to be at. This is the cheapest way to go. It's about 10 bucks for this thing. Uh, I've used this thing for a lot of years, but there are like fancier ones you can get, which I don't know if they really work a whole lot better, but the user experience is, is higher mm -hmm. or a lot better. So to use this, really easy, you have to do is set this thing down in here and then close the jaws up. And one little trick for these things is to set, make yourself a little stop block thing so that you set this thing to the same protrusion every time mm -hmm. so you have the same angle. And this is mine, pretty fancy. I just glued this piece of uh, wood on top of this other piece of wood so I know if I set this thing down here and I put the chisel up until it touches this thing, that'll be at whatever angle I used last time. Yeah. I don't know how you don't throw that away. I keep, it in the I keep it in the drawer with the sharpening stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So you can do that with any, any gauge or any, um, any jig. Mm -hmm. Really simple thing to do. And if you want to have multiple angles, you can set multiple stops. Mm -hmm. and I'll just tighten this thing down with this uh, fancy screwdriver here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I do it in my shop. <laughs> you got lots of leverage at least. Yeah. So if I had my spray bottle, this would be a lot fancier. And clean looking. I just spray it down and get it all cleaned up. But then all I have to do is just put the chisel onto the stone and just tilt it down. And all you're going to do is just try and keep pressure up at the, the tip of the chisel. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to like, because it's going to rock on you because it's not that wide. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep your pressure up here and then just feed it in the back with your thumbs. So all you're doing is push, pushing it forward and backward and keeping this down without actually kind of like Rocking. turning off. Mm -hmm. Because you'll, you will put a, a curve on the blade, but you'll also end up gouging the stone. And then you got to take, take you a long time to get that gouge out. Mm -hmm. So I like to just kind of use my middle finger and my index finger and just kind of put them down there on the stone or on the chisel pushing down the stone and just feed it forward. So no figure eight on this one? No, I'll go back and forth a little bit, kind of like do this kind of thing, mm -hmm. like Y's or W's or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the amount of time you spend doing this is going to depend again on the, the condition of the chisel. but. Ideally, all you're doing here as you move up to the grits, this mm -hmm. is, uh, what is this, like 4,000 grit. So as you're going up to like 4,000 grit, all you're trying to do is remove the scratches from the previous Grapes. one. So you can really see it as you go. We'll see it as you get to the 8,000 grit. You actually see like the, the polish. You can tell the area is being done. So I'll go back and forth here. And then to like distribute the wear some more, I'll flip it around and go this way. Take a look, see where we're actually working. So you can see I'm actually polishing right at the edge. Mm -hmm. You can see there's like a not as polished area through here, mm -hmm. and then there's a polished area right at the edge. Yeah. So it means that my chisel is actually up a little bit, which is fine. We'll talk about micro bevels as well. One of the things you can do as you get the primary bevel established is just to work on the edge. That way you're not spending as much time because all you're doing is polishing that mm -hmm. very edge. Um, right, so the last thing I'll do is as you're, as we're sharpening, as we're going like this, we're actually
pushing the metal up like this mm -hmm. and folding it over a little bit. So it's creating a little bit of a burr on the back. It's really easy. Just give it a pass or two on the back again and move on. All right, got this thing. So the other really nice thing about these ceramic stones is you don't have to soak them first. You can just, uh, if this works, I just spray the surface with some water. But all you need is a little bit of moisture on the surface just to lubricate things. And again, these don't have to be flattened nearly as often. I th this probably needs it, but oh well. Again, same, same exact thing. You get some nice sounds this time, apparently. We're looking, working right at the edge again. And it does have a little bit of a polish going there. So that's probably good enough for now. So we'll knock that burr off again. And then some people will just take it at this point and use it as is. Since we were working just at the edge, this is a nice micro bevel on there already. But you can also strop it to achieve even higher of a polish. And this is my secret to sharp chisels is I don't actually use these very often. Because I keep the chisel sharp, the entire time I'm using it. Mm -hmm. So it's like a maintenance thing. So instead of waiting for the chisel to get dull to actually sharpen it, I'll keep it sharp as I work using this thing here, which is a piece of leather with some um, honing compound on it. Okay. So as I'm working, all I'm going to do is just, as I feel it getting dull, and it's pretty crazy, like you can actually feel the difference as you're using it. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lot harder to push to the wood. And when you actually strap it, you're like, this is so much easier now. Why was I working so hard? Um, really easy here. I'm just going to put the chisel down onto the, the piece of uh, leather, tip it up a little bit so I'm just working on the very end and just pull back a few times. Now in theory this should be sharp, but we'll see. <laughs> so you'll do this while you're actually doing a project yes. and it cuts down on the amount of, of times you actually have to pull out your stones. Yeah, so I pull the stones maybe twice a year. Oh wow. Um, after a while you with wear, you'll get like um, some breaking of the edge, mm -hmm. so you get some little divots in there you have to take out. But if you're pretty good about keeping it sharp as you're working, you never have to use the stones unless you have to do some actual reshaping. Wow. Yeah. So it, it's great. It's a good tip. Yeah. Don't sharpen. Uh, maintain. Maintain. Yeah. So we can grab a piece of wood or something. Um, I don't know. We can put in the vise or something too, or we can try the paper again or whatever. Nice. I don't know about stones, sandpaper, diamond stones, whatever. Kind of just pick a system and whatever works best for you because all you're trying to do is get a chisel that actually cuts. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with a plain iron. The process is exactly the same and the results you're looking for are exactly the same. You want a really sharp blade that glides through the wood.